What's up guys, my name's Noah, I make music as Hater Raid, and you are watching The Productive Producer. We got a new camera, looks pretty good, right? Gonna be working on the setup, gonna be improving this for you guys, cause let's be honest, we're not at top YouTuber quality yet. We're getting there. Today's video is based on something I've been working on for a while, which is a future-based sample pack. And I wanted to show you guys how easy it is to make some really great full sounding chord progressions with just a couple of cool techniques you can use. And if you guys are having trouble getting your chord progressions right and having trouble finishing music, grab the finishing music checklist in the description of this video. It'll help you finish music, it'll help you get better results in the studio, and it's helped a lot of people. So let's take a look at these chords. So I've already got these chords written down. Uh, you can see they're, they're right here. It's G minor 7, E flat major 7. D minor 7 and E flat major 7 again. Here's what the basis of our track sounds like with no chords at all. So we got bass, drums, and some effects. Okay, so I already have these guys already laid out. We have high mid, mid, noise, lead, and ear candy. So all of these are crucial, and we're gonna start by designing the first one. The first one's gonna be, and we're gonna keep this really simple too. We're not gonna get too crazy, we don't need to. Uh, so we're, let's open this up, power this channel on here, and I'm gonna go to the first layer of serum, give this a few voices on that saw right there. And then we're gonna find a wavetable. Let's find a spectral wavetable down here. Something with a lot of harmonics. And you can tell there's more harmonics when there's a lot more jagged edges there. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add some multiband compression, give it a little gain. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take envelope two, bring the sustain down and bring the decay down. And we're gonna put this on the cutoff here, or the frequency. And this is gonna, this is going to shift this up really fast. Oh, opposite way, excuse me. We're gonna bring this up there and bring that down there. So it's gonna go. Well, let's see, let's cycle through a couple more wavetables here, see if we could find something a little bit, a little bit better. And we could do this too. Let's turn off the BPM on LFO2, put this on the wavetable uh, position, and then. That gives it a little bit of movement. You can hear it sort of fluttering around there. We're gonna roll off the ultra highs. And you might be thinking, why are we doing that? Well, I'm gonna show you guys in a second. And let's cut out some of those lows there. Okay, now we'll go to our mids right here and let's load in something Slow in a sine wave. You might be wondering what where that distortion is coming from. It's coming from our uh, this fat rack we have up here at the top. You can use uh, the virtual riot fat rack. Just this just gives it a little bit of extra beef. And I'm gonna go through some of this processing we're gonna we have on the group here too because it's important as well. Um, so let's do that. Let's roll off some highs here as well. Remember, we're sort of thinking in layers in in terms of the frequency spectrum. High mid is probably somewhere around that, uh, let's see this, yeah, this 1K range. And down here, we're getting we're getting sort of a little bit below that, like the, the 6 to 800 hertz. And we can even, let's add another, another layer here. Let's go with mellow but unstable and let's bring it down an octave that works okay cool so we have this layer this is what it sounds like now let's bring down those mids a little bit
Real quick guys, to pause during this video, if you guys are finding this video helpful, consider clicking like on this video and subscribing to the channel. I put new videos out every single Friday. It helps me out a bunch if you guys do that. It let's YouTube know that you like what I'm doing and like what you're watching. So if you could do that, that would be awesome. So that bass there sets the foundation. It's in the bass line is just this, this root note following G, E, or E flat, D, E flat. Then we're gonna go to the noise. I like to bring the MIDI pitch effect here and bring it all the way up because we're only gonna be using the ultra, ultra highs here. We're gonna go grab our noise white and bring the release all the way down and then just grab an EQ and just roll this all the way up like that. So that's what it sounds like. We'll tame that down a little bit so it's not so crackly. And what this does, it gives us a clear top white noise layer on these chords. So listen now. Take it away. Really adds that extra layer of dimension here. So here's where it gets really good is when we add in the lead. Now this lead could be anywhere, like anywhere you want really. This is, this is what the lead sounds like on its own. It's just, it's really simple, just a distorted saw lead. This is, or actually no, this is a uh, dual sine wave here. And it's just distorted like crazy. And there's a bunch of reverb on it. We got soothe on it um, just to tame some of those harsher frequencies. And this has the glide and always turned on. So anytime there's a note change, it either bends up or bends down. This could be placed wherever you think is best in your chord progression, but it's crucial. Cause now, now listen, it gives this chord progression a whole new uh, perspective. Listen. Let's actually bring these chords down a little bit and then bring this lead up a little bit. Okay, cool. So then we got one more layer and then we're gonna go to the group processing. This is a really cool layer. I'm, I'm not going to play this this particular thing because it's a really high pitched sound. It sounds like I'll, I'll play it right now. Trigger warning, lower the volume a lot. It's very harsh sound. Then it goes down here. But when we add on this frequency shifter and we bring on the LFO here, we got the shape turned to a square and then we're adjusting the fine tuning and the rate. It sounds like this now. And you might think it doesn't really like why how could that be useful? Well, listen to it in context. It sounds great. So, now let's go up to the group processing. First thing we have is we have a utility doing some gain automation. And this is where it really, really picks up. Check this out. It sort of fades it in here, just like a couple of ramp ups. And then we have a couple of like really hard dropouts. And then some really, really fast ones right here. And this is basically just repeating that same pattern. Okay, then we have some OTT, gotta have the OTT. I've got the time turned all the way up and the output up 12 dBs, really, really beefing it up. And then we have this cool little tape stop. This is a tape stop plugin from Kilohertz. And this is just on the back end of this uh, this chord right here. So it just so it sort of gives us like a stop effect. And 
and that's about it guys it doesn't take a whole lot of sound design and each one of these guys plays an important role in this chord progression so i hope you guys learned something i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did consider clicking like on the video and subscribing to the channel we'll see you guys next week Thank you.